Hello again, rail fans. You know, for those of us uh, who rail fan in Florida and Georgia, and maybe Alabama, South Carolina, and maybe even Tennessee, there is one place that we all have to go at least once to just to check it out for the train traffic, and that is Waycross, Georgia. Waycross is CSX's main classification yard in the southeast. It's a huge hump yard where all the traffic coming to and from Florida passes and, and much of the traffic now going to the Georgia East Coast and the Carolina Coast um, comes through. So it's a major, major rail yard. And just visiting the city, even if you can't get into the yard, just visiting the city is something you ought to do. The tracks over the Ozzie Davis Parkway crossing were double-tracked in the early 2000s as part of CSX's Midwest Corridor expansion from Chicago to Florida. The second track begins a couple of miles north of town as the Fitzgerald subdivision begins to approach Waycross, Georgia's Thomas Rice Yard. But the super-long trains in the age of precision-scheduled railroading have nullified the benefit. This southbound freight, well over 10,000 feet, waited for more than 20 minutes for his turn to get into the yard, hanging over this crossing the whole time. He's moving now, but the drivers won't be any happier. There's a northbound train on the other track coming right up that will cover the crossing for another few minutes. I'm exploring Waycross, Georgia today. All CSX action from the Midwest headed to Florida or the Atlantic coast in Georgia and the Carolinas come through here. When Henry Plant was building his Savannah, Florida and Western Railroad in the late 1800s, Waycross was the hub. In the seaboard coastline days, it became even bigger with the building of Rice Yard, the largest classification yard on the SCL system. It's still that way today. Even the late Hunter Harrison with his disdain for hump yards could not afford to get rid of Waycross. I'm just trying to get a sample of the traffic coming through here, so I moved to the southeast side of town. Just coming out of the yard is A-794, daily traffic to Bush, Florida, north of Jacksonville on the old Seaboard Airline, Maine. There's a lot of business over there, so traffic arrives in Waycross, is sorted onto this train, which takes it all down to Jacksonville, over on the Kingsland Sub, and back north to Bush, where it's then delivered to customers. He'll return later today with empties and loads from the plants, which include two pulp mills on Amelia Island. This local is not ginormous today, but he can run upwards of 8,000 feet some days. The signal is South Waycross, the last double crossover before the track singles up on its way to Folkestone. The yellow over flashing green signals approach limited. The indication is proceed, approaching the next signal not exceeding limited speed, 45 miles per hour. We are at the Brunel Street crossing just below the South Y at Waycross. I have heard for years about a through truss bridge on the North Jessup sub headed out of town toward Savannah. I was surprised at how close it was, two and a half miles away from where we just were. Everything is pretty compact in Waycross. The town was built around the railroad. The bridge, a Warren through truss built in the 1920s by the Atlantic coastline, still carries big trains across the Satilla River. It is right beside US 84 and the truck traffic is loud. And of course, there are no crossings or signals near here, so I couldn't hear Q690 approaching. And my camera went to sleep while waiting him out, so this is what I got.
For a small town, Waycross has a number of bridges and overpasses. This is Ava Street, about two miles west of the Satilla River. The train rolling overhead is A750, daily traffic from Waycross to Savannah and back. Interesting to me is the guardrail up on that bridge. You don't see this on railroad bridges often, unless they're intended for company personnel to be walking up there. The markings are holdovers from the days when railroad actually put their names on structures and buildings, and they're still up here. Though the old Seaboard System brand from 1980 has pushed its way back to visibility. And on the other side of the bridge, the CSX sticker is gone altogether. The seaboard system is back, at least here anyway. Just east on the line in Blackshear, the Trudy Road overpass still stubbornly shows its predecessor company from 50 years ago. I then chased A750 on into the terminal. This is Rice Junction at Waycross. Running right to left across is the main line that connects the Fitzgerald sub with the Jessup sub to allow for run-through traffic bypassing Rice Yard. The tracks off to the left lead out southward toward Folkestone and Jacksonville. The two to the right are the lead tracks to the Fitzgerald sub toward Manchester, Atlanta and Birmingham. The track that A750 is on leads back out to the northeast, the Jessup sub to Jessup and Savannah. Now this is not a complete tour of Rice Yard, it's just too big, even with a drone. But this gives you a little idea of the magnitude of this place. Rice is actually several yards, a receiving yard, the hump, departure yards. There's a large engine shop, at one time run by GE, not sure if it still is. There's also a heavy car repair shop here. I've said it before, Waycross, Georgia is Florida's train yard. Here is traffic for Jacksonville, Tampa, Lakeland, the Bone Valley, Orlando, and Miami. CSX also stores a huge number of its locomotives here. It's hard to imagine all this motive power in one place, but this is only a fraction of what CSX owns. Okay, enough sightseeing, let's get back to work. On the north end of town is a popular photo spot, although I hit it at noontime on a cloudy day. This is Jamestown on the Fitzgerald subdivision. We're looking to the south at northbound Q605, daily manifest freight from Waycross to New Orleans. The photo appeal is obvious here, a straight piece of track that dips down to a creek bottom and then rises back up. Evidence that the railroad is emerging from the featureless coastal plain of northeast Florida. Six oh five used to run out of Waycross to New Orleans via Folkestone, Baldwin, Tallahassee, and Pensacola. But since CSX's sale of that route, the train now leaves Waycross to the northeast via Fitzgerald, Manchester, Lagrange, and Mobile to New Orleans. I'm just chasing the radio now, so I move to another popular spot where a train is coming up to wait. This is Nichols Street, just a hundred yards northwest of the Rice Junction Diamond. The train is W032, a work special coming up and holding before entering the yard. The overpass back there is the South Georgia Parkway, US 23. Nichols Street is a popular photo spot because everything coming or going to Atlanta, Birmingham, and the Midwest passes here. The clouds are building now, but I keep following the radio where I hear a Tampa train ready for departure. I move back around to Brunel Street, a two-minute drive, even in traffic. Coming out the south connection is Q045. In CSX nomenclature, this is an intermodal train, containers and trailers on flat cars. But there's not a one of those on 45. That's because it's really not QO45. 
It's Q441, the daily Waycross to Tampa freight train. Some months back, after the coronavirus lockdown, service designers at CSX started combining trains to save money. Instead of originating at Duval and Jack's with piggyback traffic, Q045 now starts in Waycross with Q441's consist. They run it down to Duval Yard, where they pick up the normal Q045 consist and then haul it all to Tampa. Forty-five, twelve, with engine eighty-nine, oh eight, south. Got approach limited signal, south wing cross. Main track number one, huh? I moved downtown at the old ACL passenger yard. Another two-minute drive. Everything is really close here. I think I already said that. More clouds were building as X-125 started rolling from a crew change. This train also hung out over that same Ozzie Davis Parkway crossing we saw this morning while getting that new crew. At least 20 minutes. The UP Power tells us this came off the Union Pacific, and the CSX Power Desk decided to run the foreign power on through to the destination. CSX will pay UP back by running a couple of its locomotives on some train out there on the UP. X-125 is Memphis to Savannah container traffic. It comes south on the Fitzgerald sub to here in downtown Waycross, where it turns back northeastward to Jessup and Savannah. It's got an X prefix today because there's another 125 out there somewhere. For some reason, they had extra traffic or something was delayed. I'm only guessing here. As the bottom of the train creeps around the 15 mile per hour connection, the head end approaches the signal at Brunswick Junction. Right there, the traffic diverges off to the right towards Brunswick, Georgia. I think there's only one train a day on that line. At some point today, a train came through with a grain hopper that had an open door. Corn dropped right down into the gauge of the track. The birds and squirrels of Waycross are going to have Thanksgiving whenever this train traffic calms down. That's not happening yet. From the Savannah side, in comes Q197. He comes into town and glides to a stop to change crews. While that's happening, I run back out to Jamestown, where I thought there might be a break in the cloud cover and I might get a little afternoon sun, but it just wasn't happening. Yeah, that's a Q197-12. Got to clear, Jamestown. Track one to the single main. Look, much as it is, XT, 34, 36. No. I stopped on a cut beside the road, right beside the road. It was a little dangerous, but a nice angle. You can see from this shot why Jamestown is a favorite. There's another great bridge shot just a few miles north on this sub, also over the Satilla River. But I never got that one on this outing. Back once more to the downtown passenger yard as Q125 is now moving in, changing crews and heading northeastward to Savannah. Some of the birds have found the corn now, and they're going to keep eating until that locomotive is right on top of them. The rain clouds were building now, so I headed back toward the cabin in Folkestone. The radio caught me one more time when I got to Race Pond on US-1. It was Q026, daily intermodal out of Duval Yard to Bedford Park, Illinois. 
In the lead is CSX 8905, one of the new EMD ST70AHs. I shot this engine last summer when he was brand new. I'll put the link to that at the end of this video. Twenty-six is not a giant tonight at 9,126 feet, but they're running DPU on it. Now this wasn't a comprehensive tour of Waycross, it's just too big to do that in a day. This was just a one day visit and I got what I got. But I will definitely be back to this very important CSX railroad town. Please hit the like button. If you like this video, I'd appreciate that a lot. Please join the nearly 45,000 others who have subscribed to this channel and uh, you'll be notified uh, whenever I put up a new video if you hit the little bell. Uh, button down there. Please write your comments in the comments section below. I read every one of those and I try to respond to a lot of them. Just like the email. If you'll email me at railfandanny at gmail.com, I read every one of those and I try to respond to as many as I can. So, until we meet again next time somewhere out there on the high iron, this is Danny Harmon, out. <laughs>